do that. Focus here. Hey friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. And then we started out in uh, timestamps. So a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want. And then we even start adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. All right, time for the welder. I know that I need to get a bottle yet for sure. So let's steal one off of Kevin's from the side by shop. So we got that 110 to uh, 30 plug-in, like on the plasma cutter. As I've been watching actually other people's videos, this thing, I can't believe everything it comes with. It seems, it seems so hard to believe something this small and light can do what I think it's going to do. So, I really wanted to wait. I actually told him no at first because I wanted to wait until I could get the one that would do aluminum. So that's a, just a big personal goal is I want to be able to uh, play around with and, and, and get better at aluminum. I haven't even done aluminum probably in six, seven years since I left the college, but I was actually getting comfortable at it did some stuff on my chopper and, and different things so it looks like we got a pretty fancy lens cup here so it'll be interesting to see if this is just a an additional accessory but hey it comes with this got some extra tips okay so we'll see how much of this is a consumable versus the initial thing you need nice little case i guess to keep it in I'm going to speed this up a bit, but i just like to include this in the video so people know it and being transparent of what something comes with or what it doesn't. But this thing's pretty loaded. You can look at the uh, inventory list. They've done a good job on the Beaver site and uh, front sale ads here to show you everything that's included. It definitely does not include a flow gauge or a bottle, but pretty much everything else I found. And as I go through this uh, video, look at the timestamps and you'll see what information you really need to look at. But if you want to watch this video like exactly how to set it up and put together I took the time to go ahead and record it so enjoy literally all I see on the back here is place for gas on and off and I cannot wait to start playing with this thing I've seen a lot of people complaining about how short this is you can see you need to tighten that up it's just sitting on there loose. We will tighten that up. But I see a lot of people complaining about how short this is. But, I mean, it's such a portable unit. I mean, I don't know. To me, it just doesn't seem like a big deal. But you know how it is kind of sometimes when the experts are, are used to using, like, such nice equipment where it's off on a cart and long cables and cords. I could see where that's going to be a really big issue. I think for us... We're going to be so close to like the fabrication table and be right there. I don't see this being a big issue. I think the torch is the biggest issue. See, there's the ground clamp. Yeah, it's just a quarter turn ground clamp. Nothing special about that. I'm installing the, the cable holders here and, and you're going to see in part three on the welding cart we put together how cool this thing basically packs up if you will it's really super nice that they included these accessories and then this thing literally comes in just over 18 pounds and it's just so compact i'm surprised at the quality of what it can do so stay tuned i think you're really going to like this make sure you uh, hit part three for the really cool welding cart very stinking cool <clears throat> comes with tungsten one last time I was TIG welding and kind of getting started I tell you I had to practice I had to get a few pieces let me set the stuff that we know we're gonna use later I'll set off to the side here see this is what I'm talking about is this is so dang long and I could see where people are wishing that the ground cable was longer because 
depending on what you got going on, yeah, this is a long, long cable. I'm gonna show you up close on the machine itself here on a good photo from the Viver site on how to hook up the cables in the front. From the Viver site, it could be confusing some people where they call this the positive terminal on the left, but that is where we're putting that ground clamp. So when we think of welding and we put that big ground clamp on the metal, that's to your left. The second one over is the torch switch. So that's just threaded on, you line your pins up, you just about can't do it wrong. And then the third one is the TIG torch itself that's threaded on. And then like I said, that last one is for stick welding, but it doesn't come with that attachment. We obviously are going to take some scrap metal and practice uh, what we're doing before we start trying to even think about welding up those uh, crash bars. There's no point in uh, wasting material trying to learn how to weld again. I was kind of worried about the switch watching videos because I normally weld when I welded. I'd hold the, the cup right here and work this way. And this doesn't actually feel too bad. I'm kind of surprised. It just made me a little more hopeful, to tell you the truth. Oh, this is cool. It came with three cup sizes. I'll have to see what they recommend there. And I believe these are some different collets for different size tungsten. 20, 18, and then can't read the other one. 24, I think it is. So that's gonna be your different size tungsten. And that is, uh, that's pretty cool that it already came with a selection of that. But this is the thing that surprised me it came with. So when you start out with a long piece of tungsten, if you know, like if you have a long one here, you're gonna basically be able to consume this in this direction. That's why the handle's so long, right? But there's just times where you're trying to get like in a corner, or let's say you're trying to get like in a, in a tight radius and you don't have that long stick out, that's where you want something like this. That is super rad that it already came with the short little end on there. So that's gonna be nice doing that pipe because when we're going around those corners, it may get kind of tight somewhere to use the long handle. So I'm pretty excited about that too. Well, 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 well. Super excited. I just got to get a bottle and a regulator. This one did not come with the regulator, which I guess doesn't totally surprise me at that price. So I need a bottle and a regulator. Okay, now I know. Now I know what I need. Let me grab some metal and a tank and a regulator and let's use this thing. All right, I shared earlier the uh, regulator that we bought off Amazon, but it's really simple here. We're just a hose, couple clamps, hook it up to the uh, regulator and then the regulator attaches to your bottle. Can't get much easier than that. I want to give a special shout out to two YouTube channels that I've learned an immense amount of welding information from in addition to my other opportunities over my career. But I, I said in the beginning of the series too that I am not a welding expert. So I'm reviewing this equipment from a do-it-yourself standpoint. As far as like choosing tungsten, flow rates on a regulator, anything, the two channels that are my go-to are the fabrication series and welding tips and tricks. If you have not done so and you want to learn about welding, both of these channels are unbelievable resources. One bit of caution here, when I was threading the pink part of that cup on there, I was having a hard time getting it centered in the TIG torch and it, it is what it is. I'm not gonna try to pretend uh, like it's some difference, not a $2,000 welder, but to say that this TIG torch isn't susceptible to be easily damaged, I think would be a lie. So when you thread this on, I got it to work fine, but I really had to know when something wasn't right, stop, take it back apart, and then just be really careful how you intentionally put that on. There are some plastic pieces in there, so you really want to be mindful of that. Well, let's uh, take a look at some of these settings a little closer. So, technically this machine can TIG and stick, and I don't know why they call it MMA, MMA, but they do. 
I'm really not clear on the clean function or this pulp, so just to be transparent on that, I'm just focused on what I'm going to use this for, and that's just DC TIG on steel on this one. But check this out. So I'll go ahead and toggle through here. If you knew what those were, want to use them, that'd be the case. And then this one here, we have where we can do the spot, the DC, or the pulp. So that would be the typical one for me. It's going to be that DC. And then what you notice here, I get three choices here, okay? Let's start from the beginning. So I got pre-flow, peak amps. So that's where we're going to dial it in, you know, what we want for a uh, peak number, let's say, okay? And just to show you, it does go up to 210. Okay, pump it down there. Really want to check the duty cycle. As small as this is, I can't imagine, I mean, it just killed it in that 100 amp range. And then lastly, you have a post flow. So how much the gas is going to flow before and after is pretty cool. Uh, just to show some of these other ones that they work here, if I go to, let's see, if I go to pulse, okay, then I start to be able to get these pulse frequencies. And then obviously you can see adjust that up and down. Once again, make sure that facing that is close to the people and peak on time, pulse. Okay, not my jam, but there it is. And then lastly, just a close-up review there, the T2 and T4. So the T2 is where you have to hold it to weld, and the T4 is where you hold it, get the arc started, you can let go, adjust your hand, do whatever, weld it, and then tap it to shut it off. So I'm gonna look to see, just talk to my buddy Cody here. We're going to look to see if they make a foot pedal option. I can't find one as of now, but maybe now that I know it's a two-pin connector and I can start taking some measurements, maybe we can find something. From my past experience, which is limited, but I used a foot pedal before, and I think I was definitely a much better welder from that. All right, let's prep some metal and see if this $200 TIG welder can actually stick some uh, metal together. We got links below. If you see us using it, you already know it's something that we'd uh, buy ourselves, so... Let's put this thing to work. Did you notice that uh, welding helmet that I got it on that grinding mode? You can actually see how clear it is with the big viewing window. If you haven't seen part one of this mini series, check it out. I was pretty excited to start off with the spot weld feature. I just haven't had a welder personally that had that option. So as you can see here, there's uh, many settings to adjust and play around with to get that to work best for you. What a cool feature. All right, I'm gonna do the T2 where you have to hold it and just do some passes here and try and get familiar with it. You might have to play around with gas flow. You might have to play with tungsten oh, stick no. out. You may have to play around with the amperage on the thickness of the metal. There's a lot of factors in welding. Can't stress that enough. Let's lay down another one. I haven't ran a TIG in forever. And that's without any filler. And that's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Look at that penetration. I'm at, I think I was at 110. Okay, we are on the T2, which is saying that we should have to hold the lever. Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right, I switched to the T4. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. And then pushing gears will stop the gas flow. So you could just sit there and keep the gas flow on there on your weld for a second. That is cool. That'll allow me to get a lot more comfortable because what I'm used to welding is I'm used to being up here on the torch. Let me uh, let me show you. That. Every video I've seen of somebody using this, they're they're holding it like a pencil back here, and right away watching the videos, it's like, man, it's gonna be awkward for me because I'm used to doing something more like this, so that I can manipulate it. And I was like, well, how am I gonna deal with that? But in all honesty, right now, I think I could come with my other finger, start it, and go. I'm gonna try. Go down to 105. Man, this helmet's awesome, too. Woo! 
this helmet is awesome. Let's see what we're working with. Man, those are some good welds right away. Lots of penetration. Look at that. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm just screwing around right now, just getting a feel for this thing. I think I'm going to pick TIG up but pretty quick again. Crazy impressive. I think what I want to do is cut a piece of this off and try and weld two pieces together and just see what that looks like using some filler. Let's try that. I turned it down, so I'm at 105. I'll have to measure this thickness here. You can still see a good penetration. Yeah, somewhere between that 105 and 110 I think would be good for here. And it ruined my tip dipping it a couple times. I need to clean my tip again and make it good there. So, man, I'm so happy with this thing already. Okay, let me let me find our piece of scrap and we'll try and weld a couple of these together and I think we'll call it a day for uh, today. She's winning so far. All right, I'm going to purposely make kind of a crappy fit. I didn't like square this up with two brand new pieces so it's nothing that's like perfect but I just kind of wanted to just see what it's going to be like in kind of an unperfect world if you will. Turn my heat up a little bit. This is where a pedal is so nice. Okay, let's take a look, see what we got. back there. Expert boat. Well, try to do this without burning myself. I wouldn't say that's too dang bad for not having welded, chick welded, since 2018 been a hot minute. Let's set this down and look at it. Alright, let's see what we're working with here. I can tell it's going a little fast. Right play. That's where I turn that heat up too. This was that first one. I was super contaminated on the tip or the card or something. I could tell because stuff is just shooting all over the place. It's getting a lot of garbage. But that is a dang good start. Let's look at the back side here. Heat we got right there. Yeah, definitely getting all the way through. Let's try and bend on it. You know, I'm just playing around, like I said at the beginning of the video. You know, I'm by no means an expert here, but I ran a I'll run my way around well a little bit here and there, so. All right, let's bang on this thing a little bit.
starting to bend it, but I know playing around thinner metals where if you took and buddy, do you know what size this is by chance? Like it's probably about 12 16 gauge. Is it? Th is that thick? 12 gauge? Okay. Maybe 14. Yeah, something like that. But if that weld wasn't there, I mean, that thing would be just bending over itself in a second here. I'm shocked. Yeah, you can see I'd start to get some bend out of it. But I'm honking on that thing pretty hard to kill you. I mean, the test was to see if the thing would weld, and all I know is it stuck two pieces of metal together pretty sweet with very little effort. Let's just talk about this welder for a second and summarize it up. Well, hey, uh, Beavor, I think you did it again. This is just a cool product, so we'll have all the links below if they give us uh, any coupon codes for our fans. We'll definitely have those below. Hope you decide to try one of these for your own shop if uh, this will meet your needs. But, man, we are super stoked. What I'm going to do next is let's go look at it. I'll try and get this set up, but I bought a little two-tier cart, two-tier welding cart here that I'm going to put together, okay? And that's going to be cool because we're going to make it a V-bore little welding station. So the plasma cutter, if you haven't seen the video we did on that, I'll put a link below. You can check it out. That one's been getting a workout by Kevin here. Pretty sweet. He's cutting, he's using that plasma cutter to cut that. Okay, that is some thick, thick material. We'll have more videos in the future. The big thing that I was trying to get this one done for is we are gonna put our own crash bars on the DRZ Supermoto. Bent up some pipe, got it started, got to make some of the flat brackets yet, but we're making our own crash bars for our Moto Gym Kana bike. So gonna be fun. All right, friends, you haven't done so yet, make sure to like, share, subscribe. Check out all the other 800 videos on the channel. Join in is a great way of supporting us. And as always, make it a great day and keep wrenching. I kind of feel like I don't have enough material. Oh. Definitely gonna have to fix my tungsten on that one.